Hello everybody, this is Founder Rune, and I am going to recover the token locking since our last video was a little bit corrupted at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on with that part of the lesson since that's probably the most uh, wanted part of it. I'm going to make sure my screen is arranged accordingly. I had to make some changes, so I need to re-lay out the screen really fast. And as you can see, you can unlock a lot of this stuff and manipulate it so you can put it where you want it and then i'm going to put everything back where it was i'm going to bring up the character sheet and this is the layout that i typically use for a game master or a player so i have the character sheet up here and i have it set to the actions tab that way i can ensure that i'm able to get to everything and it's right in front and i don't have to dig around and move windows the other npc stat block same thing. I have them stacked together along with the character sheets so that when I click on the right hand side, it opens it up. That'll help me down the road so I don't have to go fishing around for stuff. So on this battle map, I actually have a black dragon in a swamp. Uh, the map, by the way, was by GameTel Game Warehouse or Chris, Chris Map Hatter. He's part of our community. The tokens that are on the map, made, made by, by Bernardo, Bernardo Hasselman. Hasselman. Lady Shell had previously destroyed one of the kobolds. So we'll just continue on with this. I'm going to get it back into the token locking so you guys can see what, what that entails. So there were three different types of token movement. So we have just where the Game Master moves the token. So I'm not, I wasn't holding anything down or shift or anything like that. I just moved it. Okay, that's just your basic movement. That's kind of how Unity was when it started. They took that away for some reason early on in the beta, and now it's finally come back. So the movement with guided movement is back, and that's what we're going to cover today. So the options are in the options menu on the top right. There's a gear cog. When you open this up, what you have here is a bunch of options. And if you scroll down towards the bottom, where it says house rules, you have three different variations. You have standard, which basically when you move, it will just keep track of how far you move. It doesn't care about reality or anything like that. So what I'm saying is if I move in a straight line, you won't notice. But if you move diagonally, you'll definitely notice. So Hiena here is a dwarf. Her maximum movement is 25. If she chooses to run, it would be 50. So let's just uh, try this out. So right now it is on standard movement. And to emulate how a player moves on the table, if you are a game master of the host, you have to hold down the right control key in order for this to become apparent. And we're gonna move her diagonally x amount of feet i will go ahead and do that so i'm holding the control key and i'm dragging her token and as you can see it creates a waypoint if i stop and then i will go again and as you can tell as she got closer to her movement ending this arrow showed up so that's her maximum movement is 25 feet that's how far it is now if i switch this over to variant if i click to variant it's actually 35 feet. So the reason for that is Pythagorean's theorem. So if you take a triangle, if, in case you didn't understand what I was saying, uh, you take a triangle, let's see, the closest thing I have is a square, probably. The cone doesn't quite, well, cone might, no, nah, it's not the right angle. So if you take this square and, and divide it in half, this diagonal is, is greater than the two sides as individuals so it's one one and a half times longer than than the uh x and y here this is why you would turn on variant because it's actually closer to true movement than just the standard so it allows for you to you know to actually take into consideration <laughs> that extra movement that your players will get so the next uh variation and i'll go ahead and improve it so when i click this uh green check mark it will approve it so if i change this to standard mode she's only moved 25 but if i go to variant i go nope, nope that's, that's not it. right i can actually click the x button as well so that would force her to have to retrace her steps so she says okay let me try it again so we're gonna move diagonally 25 see it's not even gonna let you move 25 so you're gonna be 
going here and then the, as i bring this to a point here this is a waypoint this white piece here so when you stop somewhere and then you go a different direction or you continue you create this waypoint and you can stretch or use the waypoint to change your path so if you wanted to go like that instead of the way it was before you can so let's say she wanted to go around this way instead of down and underneath just because something was in her way or maybe there's a different thing happening or maybe a, a series of events changed but and nonetheless when i want to approve it i will click this green check mark and voila so the next variation here is raw so what raw does it actually keeps track of every little movement so if you move over here and then back and then up and then sideways and then down you know if you do all that it's going to keep track of even the little fractional movements so if you move you know just a little inch see there's 25.1 that's a little bit over but this one is more accurate than the others So if you're in a highly technical battle or you need that type of accuracy, it's there. I mean, other rule sets probably use it more than this one, but I think for space combat and those sort of things, that would be handy. There is no way to change the color or the graphics of the drawings. So if this is something you don't like, put it put it in the forums. But um, some people have complained that this is a little bit too dark. or I don't mind it. I think it could be a little bit thinner, but you know, it, it's just... It's better than not having token lock, let's put it that way. But there's always something to complain about, it seems. But anyways, that's how token locking works. You can also set it to where you have some paths that are plotted. So let's say that this kobold is going to pursue her. So he can move this way, and he's going to move this way to, to run after her, basically. And then the dragon is going to move into a more of a centered position now he can move 40 feet but he's not going to move all the way up there so he's going to move about half of his speed here and then he's going to bellow out some acid and that's kind of why this cobalt is trying to get out too so he's going to go ahead and um, once you approve it Well, things start happening so that's just basically how you would plan a, you know a bunch of people at once and you don't have to actually approve it right away you can kind of hold it until your turn you know you might have to make some adjustments so anyways that is basically how token movement works you have to be on the combat tracker and then put on the battle map if you are a player and you're not able to move or you are stuck or something like that just let your dungeon master know uh game masters like i said if you want to move the way a player would move you have to hold down the right control key and that will give you the the drawing here if you just move it it's it's not going to do that so that is a tutorial hopefully that helps uh sorry about the last video it got broken at the end which is probably the most important part of the video happy gaming everyone and i'll see you around Bye bye